We're going to call the March 16, 2016 uh, City Commission meeting to order. We'll begin tonight's meeting with an invocation by Commissioner McRae, and he also lead us in the Pledge to the Flag, if you'd please rise. Let us bow <coughs> to the creator and maker of all mankind. We pause this afternoon just to tell you thank you for everything that we take for granted. We also want to tell you thank you for just the sunshine that shined on all of us today. As we deliberate tonight, we ask that you lead us and guide us, that most of all that you will con our tongues, you will let us be mindful of what we said to one another and how we speak. In your name we pray, amen. I pledge Please allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have a roll call, please. Mayor Jerry Taylor. Here. Vice Mayor Joe Casello. Here. Commissioner David Merker. Absent. Commissioner Mac McCray. Here. Commissioner Mike Fitzpatrick. Here. All we present. Have, we have a quorum. This time we'll have the swearing in of Commissioner for District 1, Justin Katz. Mr. Katz, if you'd please come to the podium. Justin keep, just keep it. Do solemnly swear or affirm? Do solemnly swear or affirm? That I will support. That I will support. Protect and defend. Protect and defend. The Constitution and Government of the United States. The Constitution and Government of the United States. The State of Florida. The State of Florida. And the City of Boynton Beach. And the City of Boynton Beach. That I am duly qualified to hold office. That I am duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution and laws. Under the Constitution and laws. Of the state of Florida. Of the state of Florida. And the city of Boynton Beach. And the city of Boynton Beach. And that I will well and faithfully perform. And that I will well and faithfully perform. The duties of city commissioner. The duties of city commissioner. Of the city of Boynton Beach. City of Boynton Beach, Florida. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to make any comments this time? Um, I'll just uh, take a second to introduce myself. My name is Justin Katz. I'm a teacher here in Palm Beach County in the school district. Um, I love government. I've taught government and economics for the past decade. And it's uh, a privilege and an honor to have the task set before me to represent the, the residents of Boynton Beach. And I look forward to doing my best to make you guys happy with my work up here. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who supported me, my friends, my family. Um, one of my good friends is here, Rita Solnit, and she has just been a, a true best friend over the past couple of years and helped me out a lot with regards to whether it's political or education, anything, she seems to know everything about everything, and she's done a lot to, to help me make some, some wise decisions, and, and those decisions have led me to this point today. So I'd like to thank her in addition to anybody else, and like I said, I look forward to representing you as citizens of Boynton Beach, and hopefully I do a good job. Thank you. Thank you. This time we had a... Uh, Plaque to present to Commissioner Merker for his service in the city. I don't believe he's here, so ask the city manager to see that that's uh, sent to him with a letter if, with our thanks. Thank you. Okay, we'll have agenda approval, additions, deletions, and corrections to the agenda. There is one correction, and uh, you were given at your place a, uh, an amendment to item 7B. It's just a small, uh, uh, on the very bottom, the last sentence says, uh, the term of the policy is April 1st, 2018. It says to March 31st. That needs to be changed to September 30th, 2018. From March to, to September 30th, 2018. Just a correction in the date of the end of the contract. Are there any other additions, corrections, or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, 
Is there a motion to accept the agenda as amended? Don't we have an addition, a walk-on? When are we going to do that? No, don't we have one? It's not. That's they. They've got it on the new they amended the agenda. New, I might be got the old one. Yeah, they, they got the one the people have. It's on there. They amended the agenda. Well, since I have the old one, motion to approve. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. I have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So the motion unanimous. Please tell me where we add that, since I'm, I don't want to get up and go. It's uh, under um, under D three uh, D. Three D. Thank you. Okay. Um, informational items by members of City Commission. Uh, go with uh, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Okay. I lost. It was unanticipated. Uh, I congratulate Christina for running a very effective campaign. Um, I was uh, completely unprepared for the Haitian absentee ballot machine and the uh, fire union uh, were very effective. Nevertheless, win or lose, the pension unfunded liability is bleeding the city white at $10 million per year or approximately 200000 per week. The, so now that's no longer my problem, that's Christina's problem, the fire union's problems, and we'll see how that all plays out. The, um, I believe since I've lost that the uh, chances of the school, uh, old school getting bulldozed probably doubled, and also with Kids Kingdom. So for that reason, it's kind of probably a forlorn shot, but I'm donating my uh, four by four signs to Steve Grant because I think he'd be more likely to save them. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Casello. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, congratulate our interim city clerk, uh, Judith Pyle. Uh, she pulled off the yesterday's election without a hitch. Everything went smooth, and she should be commended for that. Also, uh, I'd like to uh, announce that uh, I will be uh, hosting along with uh, the Boynton Police Department, Redis, Officer Redis One, who does yeoman work in our community, uh, called the Smart Water Seminar. And this is a uh, liquid that uh, is like a liquid DNA. And we will be putting on the seminar at uh, between 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. at the Station 3 Fire Station, which is located at Congress in Minor Road. And this is basically for the District 4 uh, communities, which I represent, uh, Lawrence Estates, Citrus Glen, Nautica Estates of Boynton, Lawrence Grove, Palmyra, Norwood, and Nautica Sound. So between 9 and 10.30, if you know people who live in those districts there or those communities, please tell them they're uh, most welcome to attend this seminar. To list, uh, and uh, there will be uh, some free kits given out to the uh, participants of people who show up. Also, it was uh, been a busy two weeks, and uh, we um, did a few things, attended a few uh, functions. The first one, we started off with uh, Read Across America Day there, and uh, I believe, Mr. Mayor, you did the same thing, celebrating uh, was Dr. Seuss's birthday, for those who don't know, and <laughs> we wore hats and got dressed up, and the kids were just wonderful. We had a great time doing that uh, reading um, at Freedom Shores Elementary. Also attended the uh, CRA workshop, uh, the CRA put a workshop on for the community, gave them an idea of what's trying to, what we're trying to accomplish here in the, uh, the heart of Boynton. It was very informative. It was very well attended by uh, community members who actually had uh, uh, the ability to uh, vote on these uh, clickers, that if they liked it or disliked the project. So it was very uh, informative that way. Also, the uh, following night, uh, we had the CIA attended the CRA advisory board meeting to see how our new advisory board is doing. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really excited about these, uh, these individuals and this board. I, I look forward to their uh, ideas and how we're going to progress through the, uh, the Heart of Boy and the projects. Also, uh, we uh, attended the uh, Community Caring Center's uh, annual hunger walk and 5K run. Uh, Chief Katz, he did the run and broke some record times up there. And Chief, you should be commended for that. It was a great turnout. Uh, I also uh, attended the uh, Forum Club seminar with the, uh, along with the city manager of the Palm Beach County Convention Center, and the uh, seminar was on the uh, U.S. debt uh, problems in the United States, which are, are pretty huge. Uh, they've got more issues than just pension issues, I can tell you that. Also, the uh, Palm Beach uh, League of Cities District 2 and 3 luncheon, uh, we attended that. I, I think Mr. McCray can speak a little more on that. He was there also. And uh, I was really proud to uh, 
attend uh, one of the functions was the uh, swearing in of new of nine new Boynton uh, Beach police officers, and really look forward to having uh, them join Chief Katz's team here. Uh, it's something that we need in this community, keeps us safe 24-7. And Chief, I thank you for bringing those people aboard, and I know they're going to be doing a great job for us. And uh, lastly, um, I attended uh, the um, Gold Coast Band concert. It was held at the Boynton Beach Community High School. And if you ever got, they used to hold uh, their uh, concerts over at the Civic Center, but they've gotten so large now, they have to have a bigger venue, and they've used the high school. And it was attended by over 800 people. The, the auditorium was packed, and the music they played, it was, just, it was just great. It was a great, great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. And if you have the opportunity, I would uh, uh, suggest to you that you attend one of their concerts. Uh, I think it's Ken, um, his last name, the, the conductor anyway. He's, he's new. A, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, he's a... a well, thank you, Will Banks. And he's, a, he's I tell you, he's six foot eight, and he conducts this orchestra. He's a, he's a mammoth of a man, and he just flows with the music, and it was, it was enjoyed by all. So, uh, and just lastly, um, <laughs> talking a lot here. Lastly, uh, there was an article in uh, yesterday's paper in the Palm Beach Post, and uh, the Boynton uh, Beach High Schoolers, uh, they have a uh, program over there, um, the um, Aerospace Science uh, Academy. They've had it over there for a number of years. And our own Don Scantlin, who's uh, been a member of, uh, ran our finance committee for the longest time. His wife, I think, sits on our Parks and Recreation Board. He, he runs that program. Over, he teaches a program over there. And they're in competition. They're going to Georgia. And, and what they do is they get this drone kit sent to the school. They've got to put it together. Uh, and they're going to fly it in competition down here in Georgia. And if they win, they go on to, um, I think it's Illinois somewhere, for uh, nationwide competition. So exciting things happening here in Boynton Beach, and thank you for your time, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Katz, do you have anything else? Um, yeah, I'll just mention that uh, I know Commissioner Merker isn't here, but uh, I've known him for a number of years. Uh, I think that through my little experience that I have in elected office, you know, and, uh, and running in elections, that anybody who, who endeavors to seek elected office and puts the effort in and the time in to perform that duty deserves some commendation. And, you know, as, like I said, it's a shame he's not here right now, but I'd just like to say that I've known him for a number of years. He's always been kind to me and that I appreciate his service, not just as a friend, but as a resident of Boynton Beach and District 1 as well. Thank you. Commissioner McCray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I'd like to say to uh, Commissioner Fitzpatrick, uh, sir, I want to tell you thank you for running a clean election. Appreciate that. I'm just saying well, what we see that Trump and Hillary is doing, you know, it's, it's a blessing. I'm just saying I want to tell you first, thank you. More would be said, I'm just saying, you know, at the April meeting. Okay, Saturday before, I did the 5K hunger walk and run. Chief was a show off. I was on my way down, and he was on his way back. <laughs> and... He said, I think I better go and run with Commissioner McCray, which he did. He said, you got 50 more yards to go. <laughs> Chief, the next time I have 50 more yards to go, it's all right if you carry me, okay? It's, it was fine. I'm just saying, I don't think I'd do it ever again, but I will. Okay, number two. Today I attended, attended the Senior Health Fair over at the Civic Center, and the crowd was phenomenal. Phenomenal. It was a great turnout. And today I did Let's Move Boynton. I started off with some of the employees. We started off walking together. We was going from the, the city hall right here over to the ocean. I don't know what happened to them, but when I got to the ocean, I circled everything and came back. I seen them on the way back. I don't know where they stopped at, but anyway, I caught up with them and passed them again, and I beat them back. So uh, I think staff need to pep up their walk. They said, no, I walked too fast. Also, I attended the... Oh, the flyers are here, so let's move point and just want to let you know if you want to participate, they're on the back table. I also attended the League of City Lunch in District 2 and 3, and it was nice just to hear other elected officials come together and voice their opinion about little things that they was having going on in their community, and we was able to share among each other. I also attended the swearing-in ceremony for the nine new officers and the one sergeant that got promoted. Uh, one of my constituents called me and told me, said that I thought that it would be beneficial if the officers would come to City Hall and be presented. 
And I was glad that Chief told him it was no way it could be possible. I'm just saying, you know, if they come in for our meeting tonight to be presented, who's protecting the citizens? And Chief, I applaud you for saying no. I was behind him shaking my head. I, you didn't see me, but anyway, thank you for being obedient. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I believe uh, Christine Romulus is in the audience. If you'd rise, if you'd stand so we can all recognize you. Christine won the District 3 election. Um, we will... We will, when the uh, returns are official, then we can swear her in. That'll probably, this eight, first meeting in April, probably. And thank you, and congratulations. And I would just like to thank all those that uh, voted for me, got me in the runoff for mayor. I appreciate that very much, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you to come out a second time, I guess, here in a couple of weeks toward the runoff election. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, we'll go to uh, announcements and community special events and presentation be by uh, announcement by Recreation Parks Director Wally Majors. This will be uh, regarding the Spring Eggs Extravaganza event. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. Wally Majors, uh, Recreation and Parks Director, uh, here to announce that on March 26th, Beginning at 10 o'clock, we're hosting our annual extravaganza at Barrier Free Park on uh, South Congress Avenue. As always, we expect a very, very large crowd. Uh, children 1 to 12 are invited, uh, free of charge, of course. This is a part of our continuing series of events called Play Unplugged. And um, again, along with uh, uh, many uh, food trucks, a face painting, Peter Cottontail, of course, the ever famous head hunt. So I hope you can join us again. Come early or you won't find a place to park. And again, that's at Congress Avenue, Barry Free Park. Thank you. We have a proclamation here for Florida Bicycle Month, which will be presented to Wally Majors, our recreation uh, director. Whereas the City of Boynton Beach residents and visitors engage in bicycling as a viable and environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent form of physical activity and recreation. And whereas the state of Florida recognizes March officially as Bicycle Month in Palm Beach County will recognize it locally. And whereas Palm Beach County supports efforts to make bicycling a safer and more widely chosen mode of transportation. And whereas Florida Bicycle Month features a number of fitness opportunities and events for riders of all ages to enjoy throughout the month at various parks and locations through Palm Beach County. And whereas the Palm Beach Metropolitan Planning Organization plans and recommends projects to make bicycling more accessible as well as develops comprehensive public information and community education efforts aimed at improving bicycle safety for all ages. And whereas through these efforts Palm Beach County and its municipalities have more than 145 miles of designated bicycle lanes and 27 miles of shared use pathways with many additional miles planned. And whereas the development of additional bicycle facilities and innovative solutions will make the bicycling experience at any age level more inviting, comfortable, and safe. And whereas the recognition of Florida Bicycle Month will raise awareness of bicycling and ultimately promote physical activity and healthy lifestyles by elevating bicycling as a more widely accepted choice of transportation. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Taylor, Mayor of the City of Boynton Beach, Florida, do hereby proclaim March 2016 as Florida Bicycle Month, a witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the City of Boynton Beach, Florida to be affixed at Boynton Beach, Florida, the 16th day of March, 2016. Okay. Now we'll have an announcement by Ron Tapper, head of the Golf Professional Golf Course Manager of our 16th Annual Play for Pink Breast Cancer Tournament to be held on Saturday, April 16th at the Lynx in Boynton Beach Golf Course. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Katzman, welcome to the Lynx uh, when you come out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen in the audience there, it's like to, uh, coming up, the Lynx of Boynton Beach is once again hosting our annual Play for Pink Women's Golf Tournament to benefit the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. This is the 16th year that the tournament is held in conjunction with Play for Pink, a grassroots women's organization dedicated to raising funds to fight breast cancer and creating, uh, excuse me, in breast cancer and creating and promoting awareness of breast cancer through lifestyle sporting events. Last year's event raised over 7,200 $7, hours. Over the past 15 years, 
So far, we have raised over 110,000 for breast cancer research. Our event will be held on Saturday, April 16th. Registration is from 11 a.m. to noon. A box lunch will be available starting 11 a.m. We have plenty of games out there, putting contests to raise funds. Uh, I'm going to leave some registration forms on the back table for anybody else interested. If you don't even, if you know somebody's looking for a game or you're just by yourself and you want to participate, we'll pair you up with other women there too, or if you have friends. This includes 18 holes of golf. The price is $75 per person for ladies only, the tournament. You get a box lunch, wine and cheese, and a goodie bag, nice goodie bags. Uh, additional sponsorships and contests are available. Uh, like I say, we will pair you up if you don't have anybody there. This tournament averages 90 to 100 players, uh, 90 to 110 players every year. Also, one of the things that we like to do every year is acknowledge anyone playing who has uh, had breast cancer. And uh, believe it or not, there's plenty that play in the tournament. They raise their hands. It's nice seeing this, uh, everybody gets applauded like that. So please join us for a fun-filled afternoon of golf. Help us raise funds for this most worthy organization and a cause that touches so many lives. And if you're unable to participate, please consider making a donation or sponsoring a tea or green sign that we put out there on the golf course in memory of somebody and to raise funds. If you want to learn more about Play for Pink, just go on the website, www.playforpink.org. And I'd like to invite the mayor, uh, commissioners, anybody gets a chance to come in out to the golf tournament, especially when we have registration. And you'll see out there, like I'm wearing today, you'll see a sea of pink. And like the vice mayor here is out there on the putting green last year or the year before, he's out there raising funds with their putting contest so he can let you know what you see out there. And thank you all. Ron, I, I'd just like to say that uh, I'd like to thank you and commend your staff. This has been going on for a number of years now. And I, I was amazed by the number of turnout, the, the women that come out and, and the survivors of breast cancer. It's a great thing. You do great service out there. And uh, it's always a great day at the links. Thank you. Okay, next will be the uh, runoff election proclamation. On March 15, 2016, an election was held for mayor at large. None of the five candidates received the required 50% plus one votes to be declared winner. A runoff election for the top two candidates is required. So the runoff action, therefore, I'll <coughs> the proclamation. I, Jerry Taylor, mayor of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, to hereby proclaim that a runoff election will be held in the city of Boynton Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida, on the 29th day of March, 2016, to elect the mayor at large to serve a three-year term expiring in March 2019. The voting hours are between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on said date. Polling places are hereby designated as follows. There's 42 uh, polling places, much like you already did. They're, they're available in the back on this uh, runoff election piece, so if you want to pick up and you just check your election card, it tells you your polling, your precinct number tells you where, where it shows your precinct number where to go to vote. Okay. That's that. Okay. Next will be uh, <coughs> public audience. Anybody in the public wish to address the commission items not on the agenda may do so at this time. We ask that you give your name and address for the record and try to make your comments in a three-minute time period. Good evening. Uh, Stephen B. Grant, Northeast 3rd Avenue. Uh, first off, uh, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who out, went out and voted for me. Uh, I was really uh, happy to hear last night that I got second place, which you know means that there's a runoff and there's another chance for, to change Boynton for the better. Um, I'd like to thank all the people that voted for me, all my friends and family, clients that helped me and encouraged me to go forward. Um, you know, I'm looking. I've been received a lot of phone calls today of people asking me to help uh, to help me out, and um, you know, I look forward to the runoff election. Um, main things, uh, the different. You know, I'm here to save the old high school, keep Boynton Beach a family-friendly, intercoastal community, and do what I can to improve the quality of life for everyone that lives here. So I just want to thank everyone and uh, look forward to the runoff with you, Mayor Taylor. Have a great day. Thank you. Suzanne Ross, Schoolhouse Children's Museum, with an update. Um, the beginning of 2016 has been both busy and exciting with increases in both visitation and membership sales over the previous year. Many new faces, both locals and seasonal visitors from all over the country, have been discovering the museum and experiencing what life was like in the days gone by in Boynton Beach. As always, we have lots of exciting activities coming up, including 
fabulous fun Fridays on the first and third of each month with such days as Jelly Bean Day, Rainbow Day, Teddy Bear Picnic, Mother's Day Celebration, Chocolate Chip Cookie Day, and more. On Saturday, April 2nd, the museum will once again be taken over by Princesses and Superheroes for the third annual Princesses and Superheroes Day. Joining the fun will not only be fictional characters, but the city's very own real superheroes, Boynton Beach police officers and firefighters. The event takes place from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And Saturday evening, April 23rd, the Schoolhouse Museum will host its annual Schoolhouse Bash. This fun evening features food and libations, live music, uh, by the party dogs, an exciting silent auction with items including such things as Ride for Two on the Goodyear Blimp, tickets to Disney World, Sea World, Bush Gardens, uh, and Aquatica. Tickets are on sale. They're $75, and uh, sponsorships are available. As always, we invite you to play. Come and play with us at the Schoolhouse Children's Museum, where learning is an adventure. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Dr. Blass, 113 West Tara Lakes Drive, Boynton Beach, Florida, 33436. I congratulate Christina Romulus and and the mayor and Scott and all the people who got all these wonderful votes. Um, my own count, I am very proud of it, is 404. I never got so many votes in my life. I may never get it again, but that was pretty cool. Um, I would like to stress that the heart of my campaign was creating the University of Boynton and maintaining it. And the good news is that I feel that 404 people would like to support the university, and I'm sure whoever will be mayor will also support it, and my Justin Katz, I'm sure, will support it. Maybe we'll even get them all to give us some room. So I, let me just reiterate it. In my mind and heart, the University of Boynton exists. In my mind and heart, nobody will mess up the old high school because, as I promised, I would be calling the Israeli army and to protect it, so we're going to preserve the high school. And possibly my dream was to build a, a huge university on top of it. And I got 404 votes. I don't know if it's enough to build a, a huge building. So, um, so this is now uh, uh, all the good stuff. Uh, Judith, the, our new city clerk, did a fantastic job. Uh, and the city is number one in the country. I do have to say to the press, if they listen, that once again, their coverage of the election and of our ideas was abysmal, abysmal. And I think I would appeal to the newspapers to convey our thoughts, what we mean, what we stand for. And we are not a joke. We are a very serious city. So I may go so far as to contest even aspects of the election in the court system because of what happened in the press. I'm very happy with my votes, but we need to clean up the system. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Christina Romulus, 161 Southeast 28th Court. I do want to greet everyone and say hello, and I want to thank each and every single person that went out and voted. Whether it was for me or not, I thank you for exercising your right to vote, and I appreciate the fact that I will be sitting up there with all of you very soon. I look forward to making Boynton Beach a beautiful and wonderful place for us all to be proud of and to live in and to raise our children and families in. I look forward to working with you gentlemen and for being able to represent our entire city as a whole. Thank you again for the opportunity. I look forward to serving Boynton Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address which items not on the agenda? Seeing none, we will close the public audience and we'll move to uh, an administrative, which is uh, appointments to, for eligible members, community to serve on vacant positions. We have two applicants tonight. The first one is uh, the Arts Commission, and, and that appointment falls to uh, Commissioner Katz, your seat, and uh, realize it's your first time up here. You have uh, three meetings to make the appointment, so you can either uh, make the appointment night or table it, well, and give yourself a chance to do more research. It's up to you. I'll just uh, table it because it's my first time. I know that there's an applicant in for that position, and I'm sure I'll have no problem with that individual. I just want to 
give it a second to make sure I look over everything. Very good. I have a motion to table. Is there a second? I move. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next one is the library board and alternate appointment. Commissioner McCray, you have a applicant, Leska Roundtree. Leisha. Leisha. Yeah. I'd like Leisha. to appoint Leisha Roundtree. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So the motion is unanimous. Okay. That's all the applicants we had. That takes us, uh, we've already approved the consent agenda, nothing was pulled. Takes us to bids and purchase over 100,000. Approve emergency expenditures related to cleaning, cleaning and remediation of fire station number one and number three in the amount of $221,566.69 payable to Belfour USA Group Inc. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion to second. Any other discussion? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I want to tell the city manager, you know, thank you for sending me a short version of what was covered because it was so long. I said, no, 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 no. It was 158 pages. I said, I need the short version and for staff, you know, for all of the work that you all did, you know, to get us back on target. I'm just saying once we're on target now, I hope we never have to go down this road again. I do know that you know, things will happen, but that was 200 and. 21,566.69 that I wish we could have saved. Thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, yeah. Uh, I also commend the staff that they expedited as quickly as possible that they could do. Uh, but my question is now, we, we know we had issues, we had some problems, they were discovered, they were remedied. What are we doing now to moving forward to make sure that doesn't reoccur? Uh, again and again and again. Have we taken safety measures or, or put devices in places? Uh, I know we did some reconstruction of windows and such, but if you can just just touch on a few of the things that we've done, so just you know, try to prevent this from happening uh, in the future. Good evening, Greg Hoggett, Interim Fire Chief. Um, I'll address from the fire perspective of what was done is we are conducting annual inspections of our stations by senior staff. We've um, reiterated to our station captains who are responsible for their individual stations as far as monitoring the cleanliness and, and keeping a little bit better house cleaning. Um, we've taken the proactive uh, stance that basically from the ceiling grids down is our responsibility to make sure that we clean. We report any timeliness to facilities for work orders for any potential problems, leaks, molds. Uh, we already have a current SOG, a standard operating guide on cleanliness. We are in the process of reviewing that to determine that if it's the most efficient way um, and it's looking for better ways to get that done. So we're taking a more active approach on, on the station, as firefighters typically call it, as their house, their home, to make sure that they treat it such as their home. And in turn, from that point, um, we've already begun the process of semi-annually in the spring and in the fall pretty much when the air conditioners are coming, getting ready to fire up for the summertime as well as when they come off in the fall, maybe cool down, of a in-depth sanitation cleaning. Um, not so much as needed, but it will be done twice a year in every station and monitoring. And furthermore, then I'll turn it over to uh, Jeff Livergood, the Public Direct Works Director, to tell you about the rest of the facilities part from that point. No, no, please stay yes, up sir. there because I sorry. have some questions. Since yes, you said that uh, y'all have begun to do this, was this in place prior to all of this happening? Yes, sir, it was. Um, we, we did have an SOG for cleanliness, but as we all know, it may fall a little behind with our busy times and so forth. A lot of the issues that were discovered in this were um, outside of those normal areas. So, and as time goes through, we did not have the semi-annual cleaning that was from a professional company. We were doing things ourselves, the washing floors, wiping down walls, and so forth. So we've gone a step farther now with working facilities to make sure that there's a further cleaning of the, the house to make sure that it's, that it's above and we don't have this problem again. I, I am not trying to port fingers tonight, but I'm just saying, you know, if we had to find, figure out and say, was it the chief fault, your fault, anybody's fault? I'm just saying, who dropped the ball? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I think it was a team effort. Team I think effort. Team effort, and the team dropped the ball, sir. Okay. I, I don't think there was any one place that could be uh, identified as the the weak link in it. I think, and in, in when you encompass everything that went through it, I think it was a team effort that, that failed the whole system. Okay. The next question is: Do we have any employees that was affected by this leave of absence or anything like that at um, this time? 
We do have some, and if that person, I'll turn that over to um, our risk manager to let him discuss that. Good evening. Uh, Tim McPherson. I'm the HR and risk manager. Um, to answer your question, sir, we have uh, currently we had eight active workers' compensation claims that came out of the incident at the firehouses. Um, with a workers' compensation claim, there's 120 days that both the city and the employee have to validate that claim, and we're still in that period of all of our claims. Some have been denied due to not being specifically related to the issue at the firehouse. Some are moving forward in that process. Okay, are you saying out of the eight, some of them was denied? Correct. Some of them were not related directly to after medical opinion. Okay, out of the eight, how many was denied in regards to what we're talking about tonight? We currently have three that are in the denial process and five that are still moving forward to validate. Thank you. Who validates if it's, if it's a legitimate claim? Who, who makes that final decision? Um, the employees were optioned to go get x-rays at MD Now, a local uh, medical provider, and they all saw of the 46 that went and got the x-rays, roughly 26 went further to a pulmonologist, an outside pulmonologist, and they work with our worker compensation attorney and uh, carrier to validate that the issues they're, they're having and um, going through right now are directly related to the specific issue at the firehouse. That's how the claim is validated. Was there any personal equipment that might have been <clears throat> contaminated through this issue that we had in those stations? We Was did not find any uh, personal equipment that was contaminated. The, the chief uh, and the fire staff uh, did uh, discard a lot of stuff through the remediation of the two firehouses, but nothing personal that, that I can recall. There was an individual that uh, was brought to my attention, has one of those um, machines for apnea. A CPAP uh, machine? A CPAP, correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, his, his uh, doctor told him it was contaminated through, uh, by being, because he uses it in the station, and it was contaminated and it needed to be, uh, uh, he needed a new one, basically. Uh, would that be something that's, why would that be something? Everything is looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. That uh, specific individual, I believe the recommendation was um, that pieces of the CPAP are replaced, but not the whole machine in general. The whole machine was diagnosed to him for a prior issue. So I, I'm going to interrupt and caution this discussion um, right now. I think we might be pressing the line a little bit on, on uh, potential uh, personal information. Fine. Any other questions? No, I'm, I'm not worried about personal information, but I just want to say out of 46, we are, only had eight that had problems, and I'm just saying we're down to five, so I just want to say, you know, looking at the stats, that's pretty good. I'm just saying, sorry it happened. No other questions? Is there a motion? I have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Show the motion unanimous. Opposed resolution number R16-042. Approve the property and casualty insurance general liability and automobile liability insurance and workers' compensation insurance program renewals for an annual of $909,450 a year for two years and authorize the city manager to sign all required documents to the term of the policy April 1, 2016 through September 30, 2018. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Yes. Go ahead. I'd like to ask staff, I'm just saying, how many bids did we get in regards to this? Julie Oldberry, Director of Human Resources and Risk Management. We, had, um, we have two brokers that we're actively engaged with under contract from a previous RFP. That would be um, Arthur J. Gallagher and the Gehring Group. So both of them were requested to provide renewals to us as per their um, contract, and those were the two that we received. Thank you. I, I was looking at this. Uh, it actually decreased. Is that correct? Am I saying? It is correct. Yes. We got oh, a better deal. We're getting a better deal. Yes, we are. Okay. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So the motion is unanimous. Staff, uh, thanks for saving money. <laughs> Spent this, uh, it in other places, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> this takes us to public hearing. And uh, proposed ordinance number... 16-007, City Attorney, you want to read that? Yes, sir. An ordinance of the City of Boynton Beach, Florida, amending Part 2, Chapter 2, Article 5 of the Code of Ordinances, entitled Code Compliance Board, Special Magistrate, creating a new Section 293, Contingent Lien Encumbrance Settlement Program, adding Part 2, Chapter 2, Article 5, Code Enforcement Board, Special Magistrate, Section 285, Criteria for Lien Reduction by adding a new Section 4, providing for conflict severability modification and a 
uh, an effective date. This is first reading of ordinance number R16-007. Is there a motion? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Uh, anybody in the public wish to address this ordinance? Seeing none, I'll return to vision for discussion, if any. Yeah, if, if the, uh, the attorney could just break that, what you just read there, break it down in layman's term real quickly, what we just voted on. Um, this establishes a procedure um, that is in addition to and as an alternative to the lien reduction process that's available when there are code liens uh, or other types of utility uh, secured liens on property in the city. Uh, it, it provides an opportunity for somebody who wants to acquire property that has significant liens on them to come in ahead of time, make application, and seek reduction of them through the uh, a settlement agreement with the city. Thank you. I have a motion right. to second. Right. In, in regards to code, I'm just saying I was able to sit in just for a little while today on the code hearings for here for the city. Thank you. Please call the roll. Mayor Taylor. Aye. Vice Mayor Casello. Yes. Commissioner Katz. Aye. Commissioner McRae. Aye. Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Yes. The vote is five to zero. Thank you. Approve request for conditional use associated with the request for major site plan modification approval for the demolition of the former farm store and the construction of an 8,000 square foot day care facility and related site improvements located at 4791 North Congress Avenue in the C3 Community Commercial Zoning District. Applicant is Bradley Miller, Miller Land Planning, Inc. Is there a motion? So moved. Is second. There, uh, motion is second. Uh, Anybody in the public wish to address this? Yes, Mr. Miller. I'll just be brief to get it onto the record. Bradley Miller, Miller Land Planning, and uh, here to thank staff for working with us on this. We're in agreement with the staff recommendation and conditions. Thank you. Any other discussion? Y yes, I have a question for Mr. Miller. <clears throat> in, in regards to this, I'm just saying since it is in District 1, I'm just saying uh, last time we had something that was coming forward, we had a lot of citizens that came out and said they wasn't in favor of that. Did you meet with any of the citizens in that area to make sure that they was in agreement with what was going in? We've uh, not, not met specifically at the Planning and Development Board meeting. There was one uh, lady who attended, and uh, we addressed that, that question. But uh, other than that, I don't think uh, we've not had any contact. I don't think staff has had, had any, any contact regarding the, the daycare here. Well, you know, when we vote on something of this magnitude, it's nice to find out that you did reach out to the citizens. Thank you, sir. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Show the motion unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Under new business, create the honorary Robert E. Wells Avenue on Martin Luther King June Boulevard from Federal Highway to Seacrest Boulevard. It's on the table. Is there a motion to remove it from the table? Mr. Chair, I'm going to offer a motion that we remove this from the table for discussion. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Thank discussion? you. Yeah. Mr. Chair, the reason I want this off the table is that I think this is something that needs to go back to the preservation and historical part uh, that deals with information like this and see if they can come to an agreement and bring something back to this body and make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm just saying because uh, from what has been presented to this body, that we're going to know that we're going to be recognizing more than one individual and we already have a heritage park and we're trying to make sure that we do something that's congenial and also that's incoherent in what we're already doing. So I'm going to offer a motion that we send this back to uh, the Historical Preservation Board. Okay, there's a motion to send this to the Historical Preservation Board for their input. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion to second. Any other discussion? Yeah, is there, a, is there going to be a time limit on this? Uh, I don't want a time limit. I'm just saying I want them to take as long as they need to take. I'm just saying so when something comes back, at least it would be something that we could look at in every avenue that we need to look at and come to a final agreement. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Show the motion unanimous. Under legal, I'll turn this over to City Attorney. We have three items here under legal. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there hey, are, excuse me. Oh, Pardon. I'm sorry. Yeah, I had nothing to say about this. Oh, if you'd like to, go ahead. Of course I did. Go ahead. I mean, it doesn't seem like it has any weight at all. And we are talking about signs going up to memorialize Mr. Robert E. Wells, who was here before Nathaniel C. Borrington even got in here, before Dewey was here, before Flagler was here, who put the first church here, first school, built the street. In 1924, we have Order 41. Why Warren is not getting up speaking, I don't know. But it's already been established that that street was named the Wells Avenue. That's my great-grandfather's, our family legacy. 
uh, not to talk about Pont Santa, a school that didn't even know who the founder were. Now, we have many names of streets here after people who had nothing to do probably with the growth and development of our community. This has to do with the Bahamian African community here. Robbie, well, why is there even a discussion? You was for it, Casola was for it, Fitzgerald was for it. Why is there a problem? Now, we have Mr. Dixon, name on pool, who's only a lifeguard. We have Sarah Williams, uh, uh, name on, uh, 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 Sarah Williams' name on a graveyard and a park. She was just an elderly that was here. We're talking about growth and development. Where's Robert E. Wells' name? Only besides proclamation. You're proclaimed in two years. We have every February 7th, Robert E. Wells' day. Why is there a problem with signs going up that Mr. Livergood has approved? No problem with Mr. Warren has all the documentation. Why are we going back to the Preservation Board when I initiated the research uh, history, uh, uh, project that we have going on that has produced the greatest fruit Bourne has pr produced since they established the Historic Preservation Board? Why is there a problem? You're talking about Heritage Park. You have names in there of people that didn't do nothing regarding growth and development. Just a couple of Willie Miller, my, 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 who had to do with the pool being there. But there are young guys that it was just a school teacher. To God be the glory. Heritage Park, who goes over there? Who looks at this? I got a picture of it. It looked trashy. First off, we're talking about Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Martin Luther King, I recognize him. I honor him. God knows he didn't do it alone. Your other names should be honored in that respect. But we're talking about Bullington, the African-American community, the Bahamian-American community. You all didn't even know nothing about this history. There's not a history book that has been written about Palm Beach County or Bullington that the citizens of Bullington, the Bahamian, not even mentioned in. My great-grandfather's not mentioning any of them. No one is mentioning any of them. I know there are other people out to be recognized. Let's go on and move forward. Let's get Robert Wells out of the way. He is the pioneer of this city. Documented, cannot be negated. Why is Mike McCray, our second district commissioner, holding us up? Hold on. something historic recognized. Wait a minute. First of all, yes, sir. you don't know that there is a problem. Nobody said there's a problem. You want to do something historical. I think it's good that the historical board can weigh in on us, get your information, and take that and and we'll come back, and you may get exactly what you're asking for. You don't know yet. But if we want to do histor history in Boyne, why don't, why don't we let the historical board give us a, a way in on it? Why should we just bypass them like they don't exist? Well, we this is good. Uh, and, and you might get exactly what you're asking for. You're thinking there's a problem. You don't know there's a problem. I'm not talking about a problem. But put it off not tomorrow. What would you do today? It should have been done again besides for him uh, coming in with his monkey wrench. It would have been done, the signs would be up. What I'm saying is this, who knows tomorrow's fate? I may not even be here in the morning. My, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the heir apparent of the Wells estate, man. Uh -huh. Let me explain something to you, I'm 63 years old. To God be the glory, I got family still living. We'd like to see this. You talking about this, <coughs> no time limitation? When you gonna do this, you gonna make it indefinite? Look, man, I'd like to see this done. It's not being made, Devin. I'm sure that they will take it up as soon as the commission turned over to them. I think they'll get on it and bring it back to us. And how long they talk about Warren? You all. The no, well, no, no, no you, don't, you don't ask him. You talk to the okay, commission. Okay, well, I'm well, telling well, you, well, you don't know you have a problem. I'm telling you, we're going to we're addressing it. Okay. We could have left it on the table forever. We did. We took it off. Let's let's get this settled. That's what we're trying to do. Settle it. We're trying to settle it for you. Okay, uh, City Attorney. Uh, th thank you, Mayor. There are three cases we need to have a closed door session on. It is um, Cynthia Fitting and Joseph Fitting versus the City of Boynton Beach. We'll need about 30 minutes on that case. Uh, Boynton Old School Partnership LLC versus City of Boynton Beach. We'll need about 30 minutes on that case. And Gladys Cannon, Plaintiff versus City of Boynton Beach. We'll probably need 30 to 45 minutes on that case. We were thinking because the next agenda looks like it might be light to do it at the end of the commission meeting on April the 5th. How's the commission okay with that? Uh, at the end, they think it's a light agenda on the 5th, and then we'd need about an hour and a half after the completion of that uh, meeting to, to address these three, uh, three issues. Uh, is the commission okay with that? Dinner be served? <laughs> no. no. I, I don't have a problem. Okay. Night snack. All right. You okay? Yeah, okay, sounds good. April 5th after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. About an hour and a half at least. Okay, this takes us to proposed ordinance number 16-008 on first reading. An ordinance of the City of Boynton Beach, Florida, approving the annual update to the five-year capital improvements schedule of capital improvement element, CIE, of the City's comprehensive plan providing for conflict, severability, and an effective date. 
Proposed ordinance number 16008 on first reading. Is there a motion? No move. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. We don't just take it and put on the first reading. So um, any other discussion? Yeah, I just have to the uh, uh, city manager. Is this, uh, we've been talking about our CIPs uh, and the list that we're forming for the potential one cent sale, uh, Penny? No, um, the, our comprehensive plan that we provide to the state requires an annual update. So we, these we are, take, yeah, we, we update that, that plan with our current CIPs. But, but it's the, not related to the sales tax. No, no I understand that. Okay. Are these our priorities? Is, is this, are you got these? Yes. Okay, that's, that's my yes. question. So these would be the same, some of the same projects that if we had a formal list, these projects would be on it. It's, a, it's more than that. I'm going to ask Hanna to explain to you. It's a little more in depth than that, but yes. <laughs> Do you, you want to elaborate or is that it? That was, that's another it, question. Did I do it? That's simply I think, good. Okay, I, I did so. All right. Okay. It, okay. That's, that's fine. That's, okay. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Uh, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Costello? Yes. Commissioner Katz? Yes. Commissioner McRae? Aye. Commissioner Fitzpatrick? Mayor Taylor. Yes. The vote is five to zero. Proposed resolution number R16-047, consider acceptance of the 10-foot utility easement from White Rose Homes LLC to the city for the property located at 133 West Martin Luther King Jr. Turn the page. Boulevard, strategic plan initiative, goal one, great neighborhoods, safe, affordable, and livable action, item 1.5 model black program. That's uh, to say that this item is, is uh, tied to that uh, strategic plan initiative. Is there a motion? I move. Is there a second? Second. A motion to second. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Show the motion unanimous. Proposed resolution number R16048, accept quit claim deed from the Boynton Beach Community Redevelopment Agency for 1204 North West First Street and portion of 133 West Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. This is associated with strategic plan initiative goal one, great neighborhood, safe, affordable, and livable action item 1.5 model black program. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Shall the motion unanimous? Any business, other business come before the board? I, uh, this, uh, on future agenda items, can uh, we uh, work on getting a date for that? That's been on there for a while now. Uh, now, Which maybe one? the uh, workshop with city commission, city staff. Yes. That it, might be a good idea of when we're, we're thinking May. We wanted to let our, get our new commission seated and have a, have a chance to get settled in, and then um, and that's why we had delayed that, and I had spoken to the commissioners individually. We'll, we'll shoot okay. for May, and I'll come up with a date and bring that back to you. Thank you. We stand adjourned. <laughs>